So this isn't the video I intended to post this weekend, but I woke up this morning and I saw another video that Tesla put out a couple weeks ago showing an update to their new Optimus robot. And I thought, following on the heels of the video I put out last week about the adoption of AI in assistive technology. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. I thought this would be a good topic to talk about, how robots in the very near future could be used to assist the blind community. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, my name is Sam. This is The Blind Life, where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. If this is your first time seeing my beautiful face, on this channel we talk about all things vision loss, with a heavy emphasis on assistive technology, which is what we're talking about today. But if that kind of content sounds good to you, please subscribe. Turn on notifications. I post new videos every single Saturday. Okay, now, if you're not aware, Tesla is slowly taking over the world. <laughs> honestly, honestly, after seeing this news and learning about their work in robotics, I, I really think it is. You know, it used to be Google. We would think Google were going to take over the world someday. But no, I think it's going to be Tesla. But anyways, if you're not familiar... In 2021, Tesla announced that they were in the robot game. They were going to start building robots with an intent to mass produce robots to take over menial jobs and in the labor force in the world. So you think about those menial, repetitive jobs that nobody wants to do. Their goal is to produce a robot, a humanoid robot, to perform those tasks. And now, this isn't anything new. I mean, Boston Dynamics has been doing this since the 90s, and they have a very impressive robot. One of the, the best robots currently on the planet is their Atlas series of robots, a bipedal robot. Now, a couple things that differentiate Atlas from Optimus. Optimus is Tesla's robot, and we'll talk about those here in a minute. But what is so crazy about Tesla is they, they announced this, they showed the prototype in 2021, just over two years ago, and this thing was a mess. I mean, it was impressive. It's better than anything I could build, but <laughs> it wasn't great. It could barely move. It could barely walk. Uh, it, could, it couldn't really, like, bend or, or it, the articulation wasn't great. It couldn't move its head very much. It was very clunky. It also also looked like a, a heap of scrap metal. I mean, there was wires and things everywhere. It looked like a skeleton made out of wires. Once again, still very impressive. But fast forward, one year later, they announced their Optimus Generation 1. And it was already a vast improvement over that first initial prototype. And although it's still not, you know, by Boston Dynamics kind of quality, it was, it was very impressive. And I'll give a better description of what it looks like here in a second. But this brings us to the announcement just back in December of last year, 2023, like I said, just a couple weeks ago, they announced and unveiled their Generation 2, Optimus Gen 2. And holy crap, this thing is amazing. Okay, and this is what really sparked my, okay, okay, let's, let's talk about this thing and how it could relate to our community in the future. But first, let me kind of give you a description of this thing. So the color motif is very black and white. So imagine, it looks kind of like a stormtrooper uh, uniform or, or stormtrooper armor. So if you can imagine a very skinny stormtrooper, or if C-3PO from Star Wars was wearing stormtrooper armor, that's what this Optimus Gen 2 looks like. So it looks very humanoid and very slimline and very, very cool. <laughs> I will be honest. If you've ever seen, if you ever watched iRobot with Will Smith, that old movie, this is what it looks like. It looks like one of those. But this is where we start to talk about the differences between Boston Dynamics Atlas Robot and Optimus Gen 2 and where they differentiate and why it's in so incredibly amazing what they've done in one year, less than a year, the difference between Gen 1 Optimus and Gen 2 is insane. And the difference between prototype robot and Gen 2 is incredible. But the differences between the two, Atlas and Optimus. Number one, Atlas, for the most part, has always needed to be tethered by what they call an umbilical system, which provides power, it provides cooling, and all of that. Now, they have a 
untethered version of Atlas. You you may have seen some of the videos of it running through an obstacle course and doing backflips and all this kind of stuff. And it's not tethered, but it still has this big bulky system like on its back that includes all the all the same stuff, the power and the cooling system and all of that. So it looks, although it does kind of resemble a bipedal humanoid shape, it's not. It's very robotic. It's very bulky. If you saw a silhouette of this thing, you would be like, that's a robot. Now, Optimus, on the other hand, hand all of that is built inside a very slim, thin frame, humanoid frame. If you saw a silhouette of Optimus, you would be like, okay, that person needs to eat a little bit. It's very skinny, but that is a human. That is a human I'm looking at right there. <laughs> One of the other big differences between Atlas and Optimus are the robot's hands. So currently Atlas just uses like a pincher grip kind of robot hand, but Optimus has fully articulating five digit human hands. They talk about this measurement in engineering called a DOF, degree of function. And the, the latest gen Optimus has a two DO, DOF for the neck, which means it can move in two directions. So it can swing left and right, and then it can pivot forwards and backwards. The hand and the fingers and everything have an 11 DOF. That is how articulating these hands are. And they've also developed pressure sensitive pads on the fingertips. And they demonstrate this in the video by having the robot pick up an egg and place an egg in another container. Now, this isn't anything new. Robots have been moving eggs around for, you know, decades. You might not realize it, but the eggs you get in your carton in the grocery store, robots move those eggs around and put them into the cartons. Humans probably never even touch those eggs. But the way they've done it before is either pre-programming the exact pressure needed to pick up the egg and not crush it, or using some type of suction to suction cup to the egg and pick it up. Never before have they used pressure sensitive to where the robot decides how much pressure to squeeze that egg to, to just enough pressure to pick it up without crushing it. Optimus can do that. But the main thing that differentiates these two is the way they think. Atlas uses machine learning. And what that means is it has to be programmed to do a task. So the programmers tell it to do, you know, a starting point, an end point, and Atlas runs through like hundreds of different ways to complete that task, point A to point B, and chooses the most efficient. Now, this works, but it's not the most efficient. It takes a while and constantly has to be programmed by humans. It does have some AI built in where it will adapt along the way but it's still very program driven. Optimus, on the other hand, is strictly using Tesla's neural link for robots as well as AI. They've really been developing their AI over the last year and it's really being implemented in a crazy way with Optimus. So not only that, but Optimus is using cameras. Traditionally, a lot of these robots and driverless cars will use LiDAR, radar, all these different systems to perform their tasks. You know? But Optimus is primarily using cameras and visual systems to perform these tasks. This means that it can react in real time very, very quickly and adapt because it's actually seeing what it's doing and it's reacting to that with using that AI and the neural link and all of that. And as you've seen so far, Tesla has put out several videos and there's one video of Optimus sorting blocks by color. And that's the only command it received when performing this, this task. They told it, sort these shapes by color. And that was it. They didn't give it any other information. They didn't tell it how to, the best way to. They just set it to that task, sort these shapes by color, and it figured out the best way to do it simply with that information. At one point, the robot is separating these shapes into the different colors, and so it starts to just pick them up and place them on the pad, the corresponding color pad. But during the demo, we got a great example of this AI neural link and processing and real-time situation processing because as it was sorting these shapes, it took one blue shape and it set it down and it kind of fell over on its side. And you see the, the, 
the robot, as it was reaching back to grab another shape, it pauses for a second and it reaches down and picks that one up and writes it the way that it was supposed to be orientated and then continues on to get the other ones. So perfect example of something happened during this task that wasn't pre-programmed, it wasn't predetermined, and the robot had to adapt to solve this unexpected problem. And it decided very quickly that that wasn't correct. It shouldn't be laying down like that. It should be standing up. That's the most efficient way to complete this task, have all of them standing up the right way. And so it decided how it needed to correct that problem by picking it up and, and orientating it the right way. So you might think not that big of a deal, but in the grand scheme of things, huge and has incredible ramifications for the future and how these robots might help our community. And that's the conversation I wanted to start with this video is what do you guys think about these robots in the future being assistance for blind people or other, any really any disability, but you know, I'm mainly focused on blindness. So I do a presentation on future technology where one of the topics I talk about is robot guide dogs. But what about having a personal robot assistant? that can help you with all the things that we as blind people need assistance with. I mean, the independence that could provide you. I guarantee you they will add some type of uh, speech into this robot in the future, some kind of auditory communication. Uh, I'm sure since it's using cameras, I would not surprise me if they added in OCR, the ability to take a picture of printed text and read that out loud. I mean, just the, the possibilities are endless that I'm thinking about here. Navigation. Maybe they could outfit it with some, some type of handle on the arm that you would hold on to and it would lead you around like a sighted guide using the self-driving capabilities of the Tesla cars to help guide you around where you needed to go, avoiding obstacles, walking you down stairs, curbs, things like that, taking you right to a front door of a business and opening that up. If you needed to read the information, it could just scan it and then read it out loud to you. They've already talked about how these will be used in the future for menial tasks like house cleaning. Gosh, how helpful could these be around the house? If you think about that service IRA that people pay for, where you can contact a live agent through your phone and the person sees through your phone's camera and can help with whatever you need. Very similar to Be My Eyes, that's another option. Well, what if you had a robot there that could do all of that for you whenever you needed? That would be fantastic. And the best part is that they talk about how the goal from the beginning is mass production of these things and how these will become relatively affordable. I mean, they, they say, at one point they said something about, you know, cheaper than the cost of a car, which that's still kind of expensive, but maybe there's some program in the future where these are provided to the disabled community for free, kind of like guide dogs. You're responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep, but you can have it for free. It's really kind of exciting, the possibilities. And what's also exciting, and you know, we're, we're going to get to the, the terrifying part about all of this, but what's also exciting is how much they've, how far they've come within two to three years. They went from basically a walking toaster to a fully realized humanoid robot that can do very complex tasks pretty easily. Now, of course, talking about robots, you can't help but wonder about robots taking over the world. <laughs> I mean, they make like three or four movies every single year about this topic. Well, all the major man robot manufacturers out there right now have dedicated to not letting their technology be used for warfare or as a weapon. I mean, that's what they're saying. But, you know, anything is possible. I can't say anything. I mean, I, I can't speak on that. I don't know anything about that, obviously. But I can say that, once again, Elon and Tesla are committed to having these robots mass-produced and potentially one day, possibly very soon, 
having robots outnumber humans on the planet. Ideally, like I said, performing those repetitive menial tasks. But I don't know. I'm more focused on how they can help our community. And I, I see them being extremely helpful at some point in the future. And at the r current rate that this thing is being updated and the progress of this, I mean, it could be like 10 years. It's kind of crazy. So what do you guys think about this? I'm very interested to hear. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to start a hashtag robots for the blind. So if you guys post anything about this topic, be sure to use that hashtag so we can all follow it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button and stay tuned. More awesome content coming out very soon. Sam with the blind life. I will see you next time.